What's going on YouTube? Today we're going to do Itsy, Itsy Bitsy. Itsy Bitsy is a challenge where you have to demonstrate your incident response skills by analyzing uh, the incident using ELK. We covered the video in the past about ELK and how to use ELK uh, just as much as Splunk to analyze incidents. Now today our challenge is this. Let's see. Refresh. Okay. So during a normal SOC monitoring, analyst John observed an alert on an IDS solution, indicating a potential C2 communication from user Brown from the HR department. Okay. A suspicious file was accessed containing a malicious pattern. So user Brown had their machine compromised and their machine is communicating with C2 server. During the C2 communicate during the communication with the C2, uh, the machine, the HR machine, uh, with the user Brown, it accessed a file, a malicious file. The file contained a text pattern. Obviously, it's the flag. A week long hey, HTTP connection logs have been pulled to investigate. All right, so the analyst has pulled the. Um, packet capture or the traffic for one week from the IDS solution to analyze with ELK. Due to limited resources, only the connection logs could be pulled out and are ingested into the connection logs index in Kibana. So much like much uh, like in Splunk, we need an index to analyze, to store the data we upload. Same in ELK Kibana as you saw in the last video and as you will see today, the index is connection underscore logs and it is Kibana. We have key, these questions to cover. So let's go here. This is the virtual machine, and we click here to, and we go to this analytics tab, discover, and this will display the uh, analysis area. So here we have the show dates. We're going to click on that and select, um, let's see here, show dates. Okay. And Absolute selecting absolute. We're going to analyze the events on the month of March. So here we have March one, and click on now and update. So a total we have one thousand four hundred eighty-two events. That's the answer for the first question. What is the IP associated with the suspected user in the logs? We learned that the user Brown had their machine compromised and their machine is communicating with the C2 server. So obviously we need to find the IP address of the brown machine. So on the left we have the fields that have been extracted by Kibana. We have the source IP field and as you can see we have 99% of the events were generated by this IP address that ends with 52. And 0.4% of the events have been generated by the IP that ends with 54. Okay. Now, which one is the correct one? Now, using the common sense, it's obviously that the IP that is generating the communication with the C2 server is this. But it is not. It is this IP address. Now, if we add this here to the filter, as you can see, we have only two events. Two events from this IP address. Take a look at the events. So the communication is happening over port 80 and pastebin.com, which is a file sharing site, is the, the website that's being accessed. And this is the source IP address. This is the URL. Now, if you are curious enough to find out what is this URL, you're going to take pastebin.com and then this is the URL. And as you can see, we access a, f a file named secret.txt and it has the flag. So just by doing that, you have answered all of the questions. But just by doing this, you have answered all of the questions. Now, you might be asking me, how do you know that this is the IP address? I don't know, simply. I just tried because if I go back, if I cancel the filter here, and I choose the source IP address filter back here. Where is that? 
Okay. As you can see, I have 99% of the events generated with IP that N52. Most likely, it is this IP. It's supposed to be this IP address, right? It's the IP that's generating most of the traffic. But if you scroll down, take a look at the user agent field. As you can see, we have Mozilla and we have Bits Admin. Mozilla and Bits Admin. So what's this Bits Admin, right? It's very intriguing to uh, find out more about this user agent. We click on that again and we see the same two events we saw a while ago that are associated with this IP address. Something is off about this user agent. So we went ahead and navigated to the file. And as you can see, it's the flag file. So automatically we know that this is the IP address associated with the suspected user interlocks. Did this machine use a legit Windows binary to download the file from the C2 server? What's the name of the binary? Now guys, if you go back, as you can see here, the user agent is it's very obvious that it doesn't belong to a uh, browser. It belongs to an application, right? Because if it belonged to a browser, it would have been Chrome, Mozilla, uh, Safari, uh, Opera, right? Obviously, this, this user agent is either uh, manually chosen by the person who is downloading or it was chosen by the application, just an application, it's not a browser. So that is the answer. The infected machine connected to the famous file sharing site in this period. It's a file sharing site, which also acts as a C2 server. Now, basically, guys, you can answer the rest of the questions just by finding out these two. Automatic is like a roller coaster, right? You find the answer for this question and you have only two events to investigate. This is the site that has been visited. This is the URL here. And this is the file that have been accessed. And this is the flag. All of the questions are uh, asking about these things. Site, the URL, the file, and the flag. That's it, guys. It's very easy. So I hope you like this. And I will see you in the next video.